Welcome to Grand Final Week in KFC Supercoach. But before we get into the build-up for a massive week ahead, let's look at who was hot and who was cold in round 23. It's fair to say I didn't see this one coming. I don't think the Bombers did either. They were absolutely obliterated by GWS and Jesse Hogan was the man to cash in. Nine goals, 14 marks, 197 KFC Supercoach. He was a bit unlucky that he didn't join at the 200 Club this weekend. He had his nose over 200 points for a few seconds there towards the end, but then with some late scaling. Got knocked back to 197, but still an absolutely unbelievable score. And a huge result if you're one of the 447 teams out of 190,000 that have Jesse Hogan in your team. Harry Sheasel has been probably the player of the year in KFC Supercoach. For a first-year player, his scoring has been unbelievable. And if we stop and think, he's playing in his first season and his two best scores of the year have come in the last two rounds, 135 and 136 points against the Tigers. 37 disposals running around in the back line doing whatever he likes. He's made $327,000 profit, which is more than anybody else in the competition. And this week, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes even bigger. He's got Gold Coast in Tasmania for the last game of the year and no Jack Zebel to share the ball with down back. Speaking of money makers, one of my favourites, Kieran Briggs. There's a bit of a theme here of Giants players against Essendon this weekend, but he was fantastic in the ruck. 139 points, his highest score of the year. 15 disposals, 5 clearances, 5 tackles, 10 hitouts to advantage, and he's been a fantastic pick for anyone who got him halfway through the season, and I've had him as my second ruck on field that entire time. And he's got a massive finish to the year coming up in the last game of the home and away rounds against Carlton. Who was cold in round 23? I hope you didn't have Callum Mills on the field this week. I was on here pumping him up quite a few weeks ago saying, geez, he's nearly 400 grand. You can't pass him up at that sort of price. But it really hasn't worked out. Just the 38 points, uh, even though the Swans got an incredible win against the Crows in pretty interesting circumstances at the end. But 11 disposals at 46%. It was a bit wet, but he just couldn't get going. And his price is coming down again. It's almost back to 400 grand again. He's going to be cheap at the start of next year, but don't know that I can pick him unless we can be really confident that he's going to be playing in the midfield every week. Patrick Dangerfield is one of the all-time greats in KFC Supercoach. He's put up scores over 200 in the past, and we know how well he can go, but just could not get near it on Saturday night against the Saints. Only 13 disposals at 31% efficiency. He was under pressure all the time and scored just the 27 points. So he's got a game at home to finish off the year, but I think it's a bit of an end of an era in KFC Supercoach for Paddy Dangerfield. And we don't like to take aim at rookies here, but I'll throw Campbell Chesser in as one of the cool players this week because a lot of us, including me, we've been relying on him as cover with Nick Dacos out. He's the only guy we've got to come on off the bench, and it hasn't quite worked out as we would have hoped. We thought maybe he could have spiked a 50 or a 60-point score, which would have been great at this time of year. But even though the Eagles got a great win and there were some points up for grabs in the final quarter, he wasn't there. He'd been subbed out of the game with 36 points. He's now played 14 games and averaging 35.7. So I guess that was right bang on his season an average and he's made $82,000 which I guess from his starting price is a slow, slow, slow burn rookie. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do with that money at this time of the year.